We're back with Coast to Coast. I'm Jake Lazarus, and I'm here with my buddy Parker Stone. Parker, how are we doing? We're doing pretty good. I uh, have an intramural flag football game in a couple hours, and I'm very excited about that. We, uh, yeah? We're, yeah, we're 3-0, but the team we're about to face is pretty good. So, What position do you play? I'm corner, and I kind of just freelance on offense. I just kind of <laughs> like, just kind of go whatever. <laughs> just an athlete. Just be an athlete. I, yeah, I'm not quarterback. <laughs> I'm the last thing from quarterback. But no, I'm sure nice. we'll have your quarterback on as a guest. Yeah, he, he he's, he's honestly one of the best basketball players I know. Yeah, he's he's a he's an all sport athlete. You plug him anywhere. You plug him in anything. He's yeah. Uh, yeah. How but, are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. I mean, we had in the last week we've had some big basketball news. Um, Celtics head coach Ime Udoka, he was suspended by the team for the, all of the 2022-2023 season. Um, it was reported that he had um, sexual relations with someone in the franchise, the name of who hasn't been released. Um, we've this heard some been- rumors, but we don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it must have been something more than just a normal um, relationship because he was suspended for an entire season. Um, stepping in for him is assistant coach Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula is 24, uh, sorry, 34 years old and has been the Celtics assistant the past three seasons under Udoka. Parker, I'm curious at what your thoughts on all of this has been as it started to unfold. Yeah, I, um, I, I've, I, I'm a little confused, to be honest. Did you see the yeah. part where... It said that they had a consensual sexual relationship, but then later yeah. she came out and said that he made unwarranted comments towards her. So Did you see that part? Do, I, I'll, I'll clear this like this story up from what I'm okay. aware of. So the team was made aware of what of of the situation back in July. As soon as they found out about it, they hired a like in a. Uh, uh, private investigators. Obviously, they uncovered more than just a consensual relationship, mm. and the team suspended him for a year. Because I think when it first broke, we all noticed the same thing. We were like, "Why? Like, what's the deal? Why is someone being suspended a year for misconduct? That seems a little harsh, considering yeah. the team is this like give, handing out the suspension, not the league. Mm-hmm. And he had just, as a rookie head coach, taken the Celtics." to the NBA Finals. Yeah. I My my thoughts on the whole Celtics suspending him rather than the league, I, I feel like they're kind of doing it to, not save face, but the Celtics are a very well-known, amazing franchise that has been very successful, and I feel mm-hmm. like they're kind of stepping, getting ahead of it, um, kind of like Auburn basketball did with uh, their scandal. Yeah, that's a great point. I feel like they're trying to get ahead of it and just be like, hey, we're knocking this out early. He's not fired. He'll come back to coaching. Um, but we just want to show that we're doing everything in our possible way to uh, – I was also reading that they made it very clear that they wanted all their women in the workplace to feel comfortable and feel safe. And so I feel like they're kind of doing it in that sense of, like, um, getting it out there. Be like, we are put, – put our best foot forward here and want uh, yeah. everyone on the same page. I mean, the other interesting thing I saw, so Matt Barnes, we all know, um, basketball personality, played for a number of different franchises, but in the last few years he's been very notable on television as a basketball analyst, and one of the things he's very well known for is he takes a stance on something and he will he will stand by it till he till death. He rises. Like, he does not back down. Um, but the other day he posted on social media something about how he felt that it was harsh about how the punishment for Yudoka was harsh, and that post ended up being taken down within 30 minutes of it being posted, and mm-hmm. he ended up coming out basically saying, I'm sorry, I didn't have all of the facts, I should have waited until I had all of the facts, and basically said after that he felt that the punishment was fair. He, he also said in an interview that um, there was more information that the public doesn't know for obviously mm. privacy reasons because um, yeah. it is um, I assume it's there's still ongoing investigations um, like you said they're probably just getting out in front of all of it I do like that like the the Auburn basketball stuff I mean that's a close to home um, notice 
That is a good. That's yeah. a great point. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's know, kind of a it's kind of a fucked up situation. Yeah, it's a lose lose. It, it, it's it's a lose lose except for Joe Mazzula, and from what I've read up, the players actually really love Joe Mazzula. Um, yeah, Brogdon, I mean he. he Go ahead. Uh, so, sorry, I, I, I keep I keep stopping. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, no, go in addition ahead. to Celtics this season, um, made a comment saying, every time I got to the gym, every time any player got to the gym, Joe Mazzulla was there before us lifting himself. And a lot of players <laughs> love that uh, that initiative. And so I feel, like, yeah. I feel like they won't miss too much of a step in the beginning of their season. We'll see. To I mean, they're coming off of to finals, extent. a runner-up. Fi- they're coming off of a finals appearance. Um, it sounds like a lot of the players, I mean, they just had their media day yesterday. Um, it sounds like even they're confused that they don't even have the full story. Jalen Brown yeah. um, was talking about how he's been confused through all of this because I'm sure they don't have all the details. Um, and details just are um, fluid. They keep changing. So no one really knows everything, which is, I, I would assume, very stressful. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Joe Mazzula, just another little point for him he's 34 years old he is the youngest coach of the Boston Celtics since the 1961 62 63 season when uh, Bill Russell was a player coach and he was 32 that that's big name company right there yeah so for better or for worse I mean he's he's got big shoes to fill I mean Udoka took them to the finals we'll see if Missoula can kind of do that if there's enough talent and veteran talent on that team. Yeah. Speaking of veterans, there are some. There's a dude on this team older than their coach, which is really weird. Um, really, Al really? Horford is 36. <laughs> I, Isn't I, that I, weird? I like, forgot about the guy. don't don't you think that that's like a power weird power trip moment? Yes and no. I um, I would think so, but. When it boils down to it, they're they're all going for the same goal, and I feel like a lot of, um, I feel I feel like to be a great player and a great coach, coming from an ex basketball player, you have to be coachable, and even like if the yeah. person's younger than you, you have to still um, take in their words for consideration. And and honestly, I kind of like that he's younger than Big Al because Big Al be able to give him yeah. his thoughts, and Joe will respect him even more. I feel like it'd be very mutual. Uh, beneficial. Beneficial. Yeah, mutual, I, mutual I beneficial. mean, yeah. mutually beneficial. Mutually beneficial. Um, there, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, um, he's a uh, obviously the interim head coach. We'll see if they go out and make a hire for next season. It's no one knows if Udoke is going to be back for the twenty three twenty four season. They've left the door open for a few possibilities, but. We don't know yet. I mean, that's all. Yeah. It is all TBD. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Is there anything other, anything else Celtics that, like, like um, off-season? Tell them they you got mentioned Malcolm, Malcolm, Brogdon. Malcolm Brogdon. So that's their, uh, that was their big off-season um, acquisition from the Pacers. We, I mean, we go through that. Malcolm Brogdon for, uh, they gave up Aaron Neesmith, um, Daniel Tice, uh, Stauskas, um, Fitz, Morgan, wow, they gave up a lot of talent and a 23 first round pick. So, I mean, Brogdon's going to add their their core group of guys, Tatum, Horford, um, Brown, and Brogdon is kind of mm-hmm. going to be there. Four. And who am I missing in that starting lineup? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't, no, Brogdon's a guard. He, you don't you think he'll like, start? F- um. Oh, for some reason when I heard you say four, I thought you meant like put him at the power forward. Um, oh no no no! no. I'm I, just saying he'll he'll be a part of that core group of guys. I I definitely Jason need to, to start. Uh, yeah, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Robert Williams, Marcus Smart, and Al Horford. He'll probably I mean that starting Dude. lineup is probably going to be Tatum, Brown, um, Brogdon, and then Marcus Smart, Al Horford. I mean that's small ball, but yeah, they'll that, figure it out. Hearing that out loud, or some, or that, someone the, will come off the bench. But that's that's filthy. Cel- hearing that that is that is nice. Hearing that come come out loud, that is a very nice lineup right there. I um, yeah. you know, I feel like their biggest with 
getting brought in, I feel like their biggest, what they gave up the biggest was Aaron E. Smith. I feel like he could, yeah. he could make some. He, could he was a big a piece to their finals run. He was a big yeah. depth piece to that finals run. Um, to go so over, I'm, yeah, I'm excited get. to see what this Celtics team has to show. I mean, I think it's really this this whole season they're gonna. I, I, personally, I think they're gonna struggle out of the gate just because mm-hmm. of all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm actually curious. I'm gonna look up their schedule because if they have a tough start, like a, like a tough start to the season, I'm a little hesitant to be like. They're the surefire favorites going into the year because I don't know that they are yeah. with all of this. I think they they were one of the top few teams in the East. I think it'd be yeah. dumb to say they weren't. Oh, what do no. you think? Like, I, what do you, what I, are your expectations for the Celtics? Okay, I could be just a dumb optimist, but I think mm-hmm. they can come out the gates firing in a sense that they're all, they're like real. We're not letting this shit bother us. We're just going out and doing us. And with the addition of Malcolm Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon is an amazing player who's been playing on bad teams for a while, so he's probably hungry. He's probably like, this is my time. I'm coming now, and we are, we're going places. And I mean, we... we er, go. I was going to say, I just pulled up their schedule. They start at home against the Sixers. That's a tough start. Mm. They go on the road to Miami, on the road to Orlando, on the road to Chicago. That's their first four games. That's a other that's than Orlando. I mean, pretty hard start. Those are three three tough games outside of Orlando. Yeah. Um, and we'll see. Obviously, I mean, you get the Bulls it's a couple a times season. in the first few games. It's a yeah, it's a long season. I. But yeah, that makes sense. To go back on who we think will start, I know we're bouncing around yeah. everywhere, but I honestly think Brogdon, or at least if I was the coach, I would have Brogdon coming off the bench, just because I feel like. Um, He's more of a scorer than Derek White, or at least a uh, like Derek White can score. But I feel like he kind of needs scores yeah. around him to score. You got to give yourself some depth. And, yeah, and I think Malcolm Brogdon. They traded be away a lot of that depth. off the bench. Yeah, yeah, and I think Brogdon be a lot better scoring option off the bench than Derek White would be. And I totally agree. Yeah, but yeah, I so think that'll be fun to see how it plays out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm excited. I, I, they'll be a top few team in the East when all said and done. But we'll we'll see how they come out the gates. Um, yeah. And obviously, we'll stay on this story next week um, or whenever we have updates because I think there's going to be some interesting details that are going to come out, and we'll stay yeah. on top of them for y'all. I think that oh, just about does it. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> all right. Well. We will catch y'all back here probably tomorrow or the day after, TBD, whenever we record. But, yeah, let's get it. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Peace. Peace.